my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to this video all about positive pressure boilers and how we do the test on positive pressure boilers when we're servicing. But first of all we need to know exactly what we mean by positive and negative pressure boilers. So as usual let's get on with it. Now when we're talking about positive and negative pressure boilers we're talking about what kind of pressure we've got inside the combustion chamber and how that boiler is evacuating its products of combustion. Now, new boilers are all negative pressure. That means the fan is drawing its products of combustion out from the heat exchanger and out to the outside. And at the same time, it's drawing air into the boiler itself to give air for combustion and the way it does it is this is a, a new standard flue what we've got here is where the air comes in and the products come out so in a negative pressure boiler the fan is connected to the flue here but on a positive pressure boiler it's not connected to the fan directly what it's doing is it's sucking the air into the boiler and then pushing the products out. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But this is for atmospheric burners, not the new premix burners, because they're slightly different. But premix burners are still under negative pressure, not positive. So negative pushes the products out, positive sucks the air in. And let's start off with negative pressure. Now all boilers now are negative pressure. So first of all let's see the telltale signs of how we know this is a negative pressure boiler. So if I take the main front cover off we can now see we've got the combustion chamber cover. Now what we've got here is just two little clips at the top, two little pegs really, and two screws holding it in. So that's a good First of all, indication this is under negative pressure because what happens is if we turn, I've taken the screws out the bottom here, but if we turn the boiler on, so the power's on, I'm going to call for heat. So you can see the casing is being sucked up. You can see that. So there you go, that's a negative pressure boiler. So that makes it safer. because you can see the boiler itself is helping the case to suck in that air. So if we did have a, a leak on the case seal here, it would draw fresh air in rather than putting products of combustion out, which that positive pressure boiler will do. So let's have a look at this fan position, let's remove the cover. So you can actually see now where that, what I was meaning before that the fan is connected to the flue via the flue elbow. So you can see the flue there and the flue elbow and you can see now that basically what's happening is this is a combustion chamber it's going through the hood onto the back of the fan and the fan is pushing the products of combustion out and you can also see the gap there now where this is where the air would be drawn in would go down the side of there would come up into here and would be the air for combustion. So that's how a negative pressure boiler works with the fan position. Another telltale sign is the actual seal, what runs around the outer combustion chamber door or cover, is like a foam rather than a, a rubber. So that's another difference between negative pressure and positive. So negative pressure has this like a foam seal where positive has a good thick rubber seal. So let's get back to this positive pressure boiler and have a look at this test. Now before we get on to the test, let's have a look again at how we're going to spot whether we've got positive or negative pressure boiler. This is a Feroli Optima 700. Okay, so I know this is positive pressure. So if we take the case off, the first thing we can see different is we've got some clamps. 
so now we've got four clamps instead of two little pegs on the top. So there's two clamps on the top here, two clamps on the bottom here, and we've also got five screws. Well, I've removed the screws to make it quicker to take the combustion cover off. So, just undo the four clamps. Um, off comes the cover. Okay, so that's the first difference that we've got these clamps to keep it on. Now the next thing is the actual seal itself. Now on a lot of negative pressure boilers the seal is actually on the combustion chamber cover door. So that's normally where it is. But on the positive pressure a lot of them are not on the front door. Some of them are. <laughs> But the seal is also a lot thicker and rubberized rather than being that foam stuff. Okay, so that's another good uh, indication that we're looking at a positive pressure. And the biggest giveaway is the fan. So you can now see the fan is completely different. So let's have a close look at the fan. Now, if I turn the fan on, where the air is being forced out for combustion it then goes down a load of little holes which can we see here through the holes there so the air gets forced down these holes down the side comes into the combustion chamber and then into the burner and then the burner then pushes it then pushes the products of combustion out you can see the flue system is completely different than a standard flue you would see on a negative pressure. So that's the biggest differences. Now, let's finally get to this test. Now if you've been called to service these boilers, the first part of it is incredibly important. We need to do a visual inspection. Obviously, before we take the cover off, before we touch the boiler, we'll use our non-contact voltage indicator to make sure there's no power going to this boiler. We won't have to carry out the safe isolation procedure because we're not getting into the electrical side of the boiler. We'd only need to do that if we were going into where the PCB or the electrical side. But these boilers are quite rare now. They're like hen's teeth. They're getting that rare but there is an housing estate not far from me where there's still quite a few of these boilers so they still do exist so unlike a standard service so if we came out to service this boiler you don't have to do a tightness test on a service i always do but anyway but on this boiler on a positive pressure boiler you will have to do a tightness test that will come apparent later on in the video why we need to do that so the first thing we need to do is, we need to do a visual inspection. So what we're looking for on this visual inspection while we're carrying it out. So what we're looking for on this service is, first of all, was there any missing screws on the front casing? And I'd already removed the screws. The other thing is, have we got any worn screw holes? So where the screws go through, we need to see whether it's actually worn the screw holes because that could still let products of combustion out into the room. Also, have we got any damaged case seals? So we need to do a full visual of the seals to see whether they're damaged and it doesn't take a rocket scientist here to see why this boiler is in the test centre. Okay, we need to have a look and see whether the combustion chamber is uh, deteriorating so we need to get right around the back of the combustion chamber to all have a look at the back plate to see whether there's any corrosion or not and whether there is a good seal we also need to look and see if there's any stress fractures in the main combustion chamber as well or whether there is actually any general corrosion so it's very important obviously we're going to need a torch to get in here and we have a good look around. We've also got to look and see whether there's any missing or damaged cable entry grommets 
or where any of the pipes come through here, cables come through here, that this section isn't damaged. And the basic thing is we'll look in to see whether any of the insulation inside the combustion chamber, so we would still need to remove all this cover to see whether any of the insulation has damaged, is damaged or deteriorated or cracked. So it's very important. So this visual inspection is massively important when we're carrying out a service or a landlord's report on a positive pressure boiler. So, as you can see, I've now put the cover back on. Um, I've not put the screws back in, but shh. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it on, because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run our hands around the casing. Now, it's important that the boiler is fired up when you're doing this, because you'll get warm air coming out of the casing, and you should be able to feel it. So let's have a go at that. So it's just turn it on. Start at the top and then run your hands slowly around the seal to see if there's any air coming out. And obviously I can feel air there, 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 there and there where the screws are missing. Okay, that's the first part. Now also while we're on the combustion cover side glass so if this side glass is cracked broken or missing then it's at risk and if you've got products of combustion coming out more than 10 parts per million co it's id so always make sure you do a visual on the side glass now you know when i said we needed to do a tightness test because going to use a naked flame to go around and see whether it disturbs the flame. So you could use a match, you could use a lighter and you can use a blow lamp but remember it's a naked flame and this is why we had to do that tightness test okay because obvious reasons naked flames and gas don't really go do they. So again you start just at the edge and when we go past you can see it's actually blowing the flame when we go around the edge so you're trying this blow lamp's a bit too fierce for this but there you go you go around the edge you can see it blows the flame and you can go around right the way around so that's one way well two ways you're testing the seal First one, run your hands around. Second one is by using the blow lamp or the naked flame. We've also got the third way of doing it. Now, the final way you could do it, where again, obviously the appliance running on full, um, is by doing the sweep test. By doing the sweep test mode on your analyzer. So we would start the analyzer and then we would sweep around the outside of the appliance for two minutes making sure we've got less than 10 parts per million co coming into the room again you would go around the case go around the seals pay particular attention to the screw holes and the turret on the top and that is a two minute test so once you're satisfied with all that, you can pretty much say our case seals are fine, okay, and that appliance is safe. And obviously you would do all the rest of your test for doing a service to what the manufacturer tells you to do. And that's how you carry out a positive pressure test on a positive pressure boiler. It is just a small test part of the service that you've just found out. Now I have the manufacturer's instructions here but I also have a list of some of the boilers which might still be out there which are positive pressure. So at the end of this video I'm going to leave this list up so you can have a look at that. And gas safe 
also produced a technical bulletin in 2010 006 which also explains this procedure and on the back as well also gives you the list of all the appliances what could still be out there which are positive pressure so that's technical bulletin 006 now if you've liked this video why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below if you've not subscribed to our channel then please subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because I'm releasing videos on Monday and Wednesdays at the moment. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and tune in to the next video on Monday. Cheers guys!